All right, so here is calculus um, 30, 1.1. One. Um, uh, the tangent problems we're going to talk about. This is the mini lesson. So um, I do have another lesson that's a full lesson where I explain everything in detail. This is the mini lesson in case you just wanted to hit the highlights here of this lesson. So in 1.1, what we've talked about is we first talked about linear functions. We reviewed uh, rise over run. We reviewed slope, as you see here. Uh, we talked about how to generate a linear function given two points. Find the slope, use this point slope form, and then simplify that to an equation. That's how you can find the equation of a line given two points. Now, the reason why we want to do that is because a tangent is a line that contacts uh, a curve at just one point. And so in order to understand tangent lines, what we first have to do is understand secant lines. Secant, a secant line would be this line, um, let's see, this line right here that I'm highlighting in, in black. A secant line is a line that connects uh, two points on a curve. Two points on a curve, so any two points, that's a secant line. Secant lines have different meanings. Uh, if this was a context of a, a motion, uh, the motion of a particle, uh, some, if, if, if a particle or a person or a car or whatever traveled a certain distance in meters away from a certain point uh, in a matter of time or seconds, then this line right here, the slope of the line would be rise, meters over run, seconds, and so you would have an average you know, velocity. So the slope of this line would be meaningful in the sense that it, it could be average velocity or average rate of change over time. <clears throat> now, again, as I mentioned, a tangent line would be a line that connects uh, a curve at just one point. Uh, so these would be some tangent lines that I'm drawing here. And uh, tangent lines have a very important meaning in calculus as well. Uh, just like a secant line is an average rate of change, a tangent line is actually an instantaneous rate of change. Because we're not talking about the average between two uh, x values, we're talking about the instantaneous rate of change at one x value. Okay, So that's the, the meaning behind a, a tangent in calculus. The problem is finding the slope of a tangent line is very difficult using regular algebraic methods because we only have one point to consider. And remember, rise over run, you need two points to calculate the slope there. So how do we find that? Well, the key is, is that we use approximations, okay? And what we do is we consider what a, a secant line looks like if we bring points closer and closer and closer together. So I'm gonna flip over to, let's see, this, this right here. So I have a, a curve uh, right here, and I have two points on this curve. That's a secant line connecting those two points. Right now, this could be interpreted as average in velocity, let's say, if this was meters here on the, on the vertical and time, seconds. If I brought these two points together, I am finding the average velocity over a much shorter period of time. And if I bring them even closer together, I'm finding the average velocity over two points that are very close. What happens if I do this and bring them super, super close? Well, what I'm doing is I'm still finding an average rate of change but that average rate of change is almost over an interval of time that is instantaneous. And so you can probably imagine that if I were to bring these points super close together, I'm zooming in, if I bring them super close together and then zoom back out, look what happens. Those two points that are extremely close together behave and look almost exactly like a tangent line. And so that's how we get around finding the slope of a tangent line. We approximate the slope of a tangent line using two points that would be technically two points but super close together, right? So you can divide by a, a span of time that's 0 .0001 seconds. That's no problem, super small, but it's still a value. You can't divide by zero, so that's a problem. When we have the same point, it's like we're dividing by a, a, a run or a change in time of zero, that, that's no good. But we can use two points that are extremely close together and the slope of this secant line is going to be virtually the same as the slope of the tangent line. So that's the workaround. That's how we figure that out. So the point of tangency would be the point at which a tangent line touches a curve. And in this little diagram here, if I had different Q values that were coming closer and closer to P, you see, look at that, look how close they're coming. If I had two values that were almost right on top of each other, the slope between those two points would be almost the same as the tangent and that's the essence of really what we're doing here. So we can't calculate the slope of a tangent line but we can calculate the slope of a secant line that has 
two points extremely close together, and that will be our best guess. So using our limit notation that we studied already uh, in the preview, um, if I take the limit of the slope of PQ, that's the secant line, as Q approaches P and gets infinitely close to P, this limit of what this is going to be equal to is going to equal the slope of the actual tangent. So the limit of the slope of the secant line when the points are extremely close together is going to virtually mimic the slope of the tangent line. So I can't calculate the slope of the tangent line by regular means, but I can take the limit of secant, of secant lines as they approach each other. So this question number eight, I also have a video for this question number eight, which I take a long time to develop this. But um, in essence, what's happening here is uh, two zero is the point on this blue curve on the parabola. And if we take the point three one and find the slope, and then take the point 2.5 and 0 0.75 and find that slope and get closer and closer to 2. And as we do that from both sides of 2, what we find is that the slopes start to approach a certain value from one side, start to approach a certain value. Here's from the other side. And notice that the, if, if we were to take this to infinity, this would be 1.9999999999 and this would be 2.0000000001. So the slopes really are approaching just two. You see that? The slopes are approaching two. And because these are getting really close to two, and from both ends approaching two, we can say that the limit of the slope of the secant lines as x uh, q approaches p is equal to two, which is, would be the slope of the tangent line. So that's the slope of the tangent line. And we can find the equation of the tangent line and, and so on. Okay. So the short version of this lesson is this. We cannot find the slope of a tangent line because it only includes one point that we know of. But if we take one point is the point of tangency and the other point is a point that's extremely, extremely close, that slope will be virtually the same as the slope of the tangent. So like just like right here, I have one point that is the point of tangency that I'm trying to imit mimic. And this point is extremely close. And if I bring that extremely, extremely, extremely close, like here, look at this. The difference here is 0 0.00065 units. If that's extremely close, then if I zoom back out, I can see that those two points, the slope between those two points is virtually the exact same as the slope of the tangent line. That's the point of 1.1. Calculus 31.1, that's how you get around the slope of the tangent line problem. Tangent problem. There you go.